thank you, uh, Katsune Mak, for inviting me. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, my uh, uh, project at Monotype, uh, which is called Noto Sans, uh, which is uh, Google's uh, funded project to make every uh, alphabet available in Unicode into the uh, free digital typeface. Uh, but let me start by uh, my day, uh, day job. Uh, usually I work on typefaces like a retail typeface. This is a, a set of uh, display typefaces that we uh, released uh, last month. It's a revival of five typefaces uh, by Beltot Volpe, and I spent three years digitizing all of them. Um, and most of my time I spent on uh, uh, custom uh, projects. So this is a typeface, for example, I did for Premier League. So when I see uh, BBC or whatever channel that's Premier League, I see my typeface, which is, makes me really happy and makes my dad even happier because, yeah, he, he's a big fan of football and he knows a little bit about uh, type design as well, or design in general, and he was, uh, Really happy to hear the news when I uh, told him that I did a Premier Sans typeface, a uh, Premier League typeface. Then, when the league uh, season started, the first thing he said to me was that, uh, "Don't you think the spacing after E is a bit too tight in capitals?" And I was telling, "No, that. Uh, it depends on the com combination of letters. Sometimes it might feel tight or loose." Then I looked at the t uh, file. Then I thought, "Okay, maybe he's right." So. I cannot look at, uh, I cannot watch the Premier League anymore until they change the typeface again. I guess it's fine, but it just bugs me a little bit anyway. But these are really a luxurious side of the typography. I mean, this typeface, for example, is exclusive to Premier League. You can't buy it, and Premier League pays a ton of money. But uh, when it comes to the really basic level of typography, uh, there are a lot of people who can't have uh, typefaces. Uh, and I think, just like water, everybody should have basic access to uh, digital typography. Everybody should have at least one uh, free font that works. And that's what Google is trying to do. Although I guess uh, their commercial incentive is to sell Androids, for example. Uh, but yeah, so Google funded uh, Monotype to make just as many uh, writing systems as possible that's available in Unicode. So. This is a, uh, about 100 of uh, them, and the list is uh, expanding as we speak, because it never stops ex expanding. And I made uh, four of them. I'm making on the, uh, working on the fifth one now. And today, I want to uh, focus on two, which is Mongolian and Tibetan. So when I first joined uh, University of Reading, the uh, typeface design course, I picked uh, Mongolian as my non latin projects. And Mongolian uh, is a uh, script that looks like this. It's an exclusively vertical script. So whenever possible, you have to write it vertically. Horizontal uh, writing is only in compromise. So yeah, try making macOS interface for that. It's really hard. And not many applications support uh, Mongolian uh, typography uh, because of that. And actually, the black is uh, Manchu script, which is derived from Mongolian, and the red uh, writing is in uh, actual Mongolian. And they're like a distant cousin of Arabic, so they have really similar features, um, like connecting and positional features, which uh, changes the shape depending on where it appears, like beginning of the word, middle of the word, or end of the word. And it's written from top to bottom, but the line break is uh, going from right to left. Wait, is it from left to right? No, it's from left to right, I'm sorry. It's opposite of Japanese or Chinese, basically. That's because it was originally written in a uh, right to left manner. And when, when it was adopted by like, Chinese speaking uh, regions, they flipped the whole thing to uh, basically go well together with uh, Chinese uh, calligraphy. And so this is the typeface I did uh, for, uh, the, during the MATD course. And this is also a sans serif. And it, this turns out to be the first sans, sans serif uh, typeface uh, ever in Mongolian. And back in those days, um, I think it's still the case, but, but you had to design a Mongolian typeface this way. You have to typeset Mongolian vertically, but Internally speaking, uh, Mongolian is treated as horizontal. 
So it's other applications job or type uh, rendering engines should uh, job to rotate uh, the text. So when you're designing it, you have to design it as if it's a horizontal script. So you have to do stuff like this. <laughs> so that's what I was doing in 2010 when I didn't have any uh, external apparatus to you know rotate a laptop, or you have to rotate yourself, yeah, or just rotate your laptop like that. And when I joined the company, uh, finally the company uh, bought me an uh, external display that turns a uh, display, but still there's an essential problem. You have to hold your mouse vert uh, rotated way because the interface is, everything is rotated. So the mouse moves in a different way. And the keyboard on the f in the front is actually a wooden keyboard, so it's not dirty. Uh, <laughs> So this is the uh, way I designed uh, Noto Sans Mongolian, uh, Mongolian when I uh, joined the company. And it turns out uh, it's uh, now used uh, in many places, including Android, of course, but Facebook is using Noto Sans Mongolian as default Mongolian text. And somehow iPhone has Mongolian, this Noto Sans Mongolian pre-installed, which is really interesting. But yeah, it's uh, really satisfying to know that everybody in Mongolia now reads this typeface and I hear no complaints, so it seems to be working, which is really nice. And I am from Japan, but I don't speak Mongolian at all. Like, I don't actually even know how to say hello in Mongolian. And people often ask me, uh, or ask many people uh, in this industry, like, how can you design a typeface for the writing system that you can't speak? And my answer is, uh, Basically, uh, it starts by reversing the question. That if you can speak, can you design a typeface? Like, my mom can speak Japanese, I can speak Japanese, but I can't design a Japanese typeface. So being able to speak doesn't translate to being able to design. I think uh, now my new favorite explanation is circle. Everybody knows what circle is, and everybody knows when the circle is slightly bumpy or slightly uh, in the wrong shape. And everybody understands that when something is wrong, they, they totally get it. But when they're asked to draw a perfect circle, they can't do it. So knowing a good circle and drawing a circle is a completely different skill. You have to train yourself to draw a circle. But uh, you don't have to uh, know when it's, uh, something is wrong to, uh, how can I say? But you get the idea. <clears throat> so yeah, so basically I was trained to uh, yeah, I trained myself to, uh, yeah, uh, not draw a circle, but metaphorically. Uh, like buying calligraphy books, going to Mongolia, uh, doing research at libraries and all kinds of stuff. So you have to uh, learn the uh, writing system visually. So you're a designer, so we're supposed to be good at learning things uh, uh, visually speaking. So that's how you uh, approach um, non-Latin uh, in a nutshell. And uh, the next project is uh, Tibetan. So Tibetan is a writing system that's uh, uh, used, of course, in Tibet, in, in the north of uh, India. Okay, in China, technically. So it looks like this. And it's written from left to right. And each syllable has to be stacked uh, vert vertically. So there's an example of two letters stacked, uh, for example, at the bottom line and a second bottom line, they're like two letters uh, vertically stacked on top of one another. And actually, each syllable has to be complete within in that pro progress. Sometimes one syllable might contain like three or four, or sometimes 11 uh, stuck, and that's occupying the whole line. So sometimes the line name length, um, sorry, line height needs to change. So it's a bit a uh, tricky writing system. And it is used in this part of China, so this pink line is sort of political line of uh, representation of uh, Tibet. It's like a Tibetan autonomous region. But actually the number of speakers or the distribution of speakers are a bit more diverse. So the pink, uh, well, how can I say? The color that, how can I describe this color? Uh, but yeah. Outside uh, this Chinese, uh, Tibetan region, there are lots of uh, Tibetan speakers as well. So 
actually the community is much larger than this political division. So, and they, they all need uh, yeah, digital uh, Tibetan fonts. And before Google asked for uh, Tibetan typeface, their only option was, at least they had an option, uh, which is iOS device, because uh, Steve Jobs uh, really wanted to su uh, support Tibetan because he was really into uh, uh, Buddhism. And you could uh, read Tibetan on iOS devices, but not, not of course in new devices. So whenever you uh, trade off with a uh, new iOS device and uh, sold your like, iPhone 3G or whatever, those phones might have uh, gone to Tibet and everybody might be yeah, using second, uh, second hand iOS devices to read uh, their mantras and stuff. But yeah, there should be more options. So that's, uh, that's when, where Google uh, comes in. And in Tibet, there are lots of uh, writing styles. This is some, one of the most uh, representative or most, of, uh, how can I say, most popular ones. This is called Uchen script. Uchen means uh, with uh, head. So each letter has a headline at the top. And this is the most typographic uh, style now. It's not really used for everyday handwriting. And for everyday handwriting, you, uh, peop, you, you use writing styles like this. Uh, this one is called ume. Ume means there is no head uh, on uh, each letter. So this could be turned into typefaces. Nobody has done it before. I might want to do it one day. And there are lots of uh, variations of ume styles, uh, like this. The, yeah, this has a short descender, so that could be more used, uh, more like a, the everyday writing. And like this, this is again very uh, decorative and calligraphic. And this one is more like a black letter. And it, it is a traditional uh, Ume style, so it's not really borrowed from black letter. And uh, stuff like this as well. So there are lots of variations. But today, uh, when it comes to typo typography, primarily people read in this Uchen style. Um, when, when, I, when I was asked to make a, a Tibetan sans serif, my original propose, proposal looks like this. And I worked together with my Tibetan supervisor, who is uh, Japanese, uh, running a Tibetan uh, temple in Tokyo. Uh, we were quite happy with this design, but uh, specialists uh, or advisor on the Google side, they were not quite happy with this design, saying that this is a bit too progressive. And Tibetan has a really long tradition of handwriting, um, but not typography. And when, so for communities like that, it is really difficult to translate, uh, understand that quite a literal adaptation of sans serif ideas. So you need to take a more slower step, I think. So uh, we came up with more hybrid solutions. So it is a low contrast, but uh, still that could be considered borderline sans serif. And they, it is also acceptable to the Chinese community. And there's a lot of vertical stacking happening as well in here, in like maybe two or three letters. So it's not really a crazy example. Uh, but there are lot, uh, lots of lots of uh, combinations like that. Can you see? Oh, you can't really see this in the background. But there are about uh, 33 Unicode letters, like uh, 33 Unicode letters. Oh, how can I go back like this? Uh, See, most of the uh, letters are in, uh, individual, but sometimes the, the letters are stuck. And I have to draw all these things. And there are about yeah, uh, 1,400 characters, uh, many of which are used for daily communication or writing Sanskrit and writing dictionary and stuff like that. That covers more than 95% of the use in Tibet, uh, Tibetan and Sanskrit. And I have to prepare all these things but I don't have to draw uh, every single one of them thanks to uh, glyphs function, uh, my, uh, my favorite uh, font editor. So there's a function called smart components, which basically lets you adjust this, uh, lets you re reuse your uh, pre-drawn shape uh, with uh, using sliders. So you don't have to physically draw every single one of them. It was originally made for drawing Chinese or uh, Japanese um, kanjis and stuff like that. But it is also really useful for uh, making uh, index scripts as well, like Tibetan. So 
it has actually become easy enough for non-type designers to uh, take a crack as well. So when I uh, brought this to uh, my uh, supervisor in Tokyo, I, I, there, were, there was a, a Tibetan monk, uh, and he was giving me advices as well, but he got uh, frustrated at one point because I was doing the mouse, uh, mouse course a bit and he was just telling me how to do. And he wanted to do it by himself using sliders. And he yeah, finished one of the uh, two letters and he was quite enjoying the process. And at uh, one point he was saying, oh, the font design is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> it is not, but yeah. <laughs> this part is at least fun. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, that's how I uh, developed Notosan's uh, Tibetan. But as I said, this uh, pre-made uh, components uh, cover more than 95%, but there are people complaining that, oh, I cannot type this combination, for example. Uh, this black-looking uh, writing system is called Ranjana, but uh, Tibetan transcription uh, on the right is not really supported now, so we are uh, working on the updates. So uh, we are implementing more dynamic solution. But yeah, people who con yeah, there are people who complain about this, although technically now it is supported, but not in this exact same manner. So that's what I'm working on now. So in conclusion, um, when uh, Dadai Lama came to Tokyo in 2015, there was a guy from uh, 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 Apple, well, although by at that point he was, uh, he was already ex a guy called Lee Collins, who is a prominent member of the Unicode Consortium, and showed uh, Lee Collins, he showed his work, uh, presented his work to Dalai Lama, and he was saying, yeah, I do not use those machines myself, but what you have been doing is truly profound. As people without a nation, we cannot thank you enough. So this is a comment on digital typography in general, but those are the things that uh, make uh, people like me really happy, and this is what really motivates me when I'm making uh, typefaces. So, I can, uh, again, I think type, everybody uh, uh, deserves typography, at least on a basic level. So yeah, that's the uh, Noto project. So, thank you very much. Yeah. How do you say thank you in Tibetan? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I can pronounce this, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> yeah, the ability to design you know, has nothing to do with the ability to speak the language. Yeah. Well, sometimes it helps, of course, when you can speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you can get to about like 80% of uh, the target quality, but the rest really has to be helped uh, by native uh, professional, uh, how can I say, supervision. So yeah, you do need uh, help from native speakers. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.